Hello everyone. Welcome to today's class. Today we are going to start composition of functions. Okay. So in today's class we are going to learn uh, how f of z, z of f uh, is de defined. How they are going to define and under what circumstances they are going to be defined. So let me take one example. Okay. I am considering two machines here. Machine 1, suppose I have given the name of this machine as R and this one as green Z. Okay, these two machine, what, what type of machine they are? They are giving color. This R machine is giving red color and this, this Z machine is giving us green color. Okay, so what we are doing, we are putting some tennis ball here. It undergone this machine, they got the red color. Then they are put into the second machine to get the green color, and ultimately, we are getting the balls of two colors red and green. Okay, now then, suppose we are putting here three balls, three tennis balls put into the first machine, it has undergone with a red color and it has come out of here and it has gone, some part of it gone to the green machine and we have got only two balls out here which has both the color, okay, red and green. So we here input was three and the final output was two, we have got only two balls having both the colors. So naturally, what will be our answer? What might have happened if we consider both the machines are equally efficient? Okay. So what might have happened? The three balls that gone inside here came out three. So one of them has not gone inside here. Two of them gone inside here, and that's why they have got both the colors. Okay. So. The same example can be can be used for composition of functions. Okay, so in order to get both the colors, what must what absolutely must what is the criteria under which the, the balls finally here will get both the colors? Whatever amount of balls will put here. Okay. They must go under, they must undergo with this machine and whatever output we will get from the first machine, all of them must go to the, into the second machine in order to get both the colors. Okay, that is the criteria. Now we are bringing the concept of function here. The same thing, suppose there is a function f. This machine is working as F with some rule, and this machine is C. Okay, and we are inputting somewhere here X, some numbers. Okay, so X will enter here input as input, it will undergo F, and output will look like FX. Okay, this whole of fx, in order to get the composition of both these two functions, this whole of fx must get into this machine z, so that we get the output here, c of fx. Okay, as simple as that actually. Okay, x undergone f got fx, all those fx must go into z so that we get the final output as c of fx okay so what are the what is the criteria in order to get z of fx this this is what this is the range of f when x become fx we call that one as range of f that must be this is also a function and z functions input we call as domain right this is the domain this input this x are the domain of f and this fx will be the domain of, this input will be the domain of z. So the range of fx must 
get inside the domain of Z in order to get Z of F. So that is the criteria under which Z of F will exist. What is the criteria? The range of F for its function must be a subset of the domain of the second function that is domain of Z. I hope it is clear. Okay, so that is the, this is the criteria we were looking for. So that composition of two functions f and z exist in the form of c of f. Similarly, f of z just interchange the what is it called the functions. We can understand f of z. Now z becomes the first function, f will become the second function. So x will come, it will undergo z, z of x, z of x, everything of all the rings that is zx images must undergo f in order to get f of z. Okay, so this is the basic concept of composition of functions. Let fx equal to root x and cx equal to sin x. We have to find out f of z, z of f, f of f, z of z. Okay, so solution one f of z f of z x is f of c x f of c x is sin x. So f of sin x will be root over sin x. Again, okay. go for the second one. Again, okay. I hope you have understood f of z is f of z of x. f of z x is sin x. So sin x undergone f. What is the rule of fx? So square root of x. So square root of x is sin x here. Square root of sin x. Number two is c of f x. And this one will be z of fx. So first x will undergo f. f is this. So z of root x. Then root x undergone z to get sin of root x. Okay. Then the third one. F of fx, f of fx, here both the functions are f, first function is also f, second function is also f, so first fx will be root x, root x will undergo again f in order to that, so that we get square root of square root of x, and the last one, c of cx, Z will undergo Zx again. Zx is sin x. Sin x will undergo Z to get sin of sin of x. If fx equal to ln of x and Zx equal to x square minus 1, we have to find the domain of f of z, z of f, f of f, and z of z. So we have to get the domain here. Solution goes like this. First, we will find out f of z. So f of cx. f of cx is x square minus 1. x square minus 1, one undergo f. So will become, will become ln of x square minus 1. Now, in order to get the domain of f of z, we have to ask ourselves under what condition this function exists. We know that logarithmic function exists only if x square minus 1 is strictly greater than 0. So x square is greater than 1. Hence x is either less than minus 1 or x is greater than 1. That is x belongs to minus infinity to minus 1 union 1 to infinity. So this is the domain of the first function. We'll go for the second one. Z of fx. So first we'll find out z of fx. fx is ln of x. 
ln of x will undergo z, so it will become ln x whole square minus 1. Now we have to ask ourselves, for what values of x this function is defined. So ln of x whole square minus 1. Here this x must be, ln x must be defined. It has to be defined, right? So this x has to be greater than 0. So domain of z of f is 0 to infinity. Again, else, fx is 1 minus x if x is less than equal to 0, x square if x is greater than 0. And the second function is defined as zx equal to minus x if x is less than 1, and 1 minus x if x is greater than or equal to 1. We have to find out f of z and z of f. Okay, so we'll do one by one. First of all, we'll try to find out f of z. Okay, so in f of z, the first function is z. Okay, so z, f of z. So it will become 1 minus zx. Cx is less than equal to 0 from here. Cx whole square. This one is nothing but f of zx by writing. So zx is undergoing f. So 1 minus zx. If zx, x is zx, zx is less than equal to 0. Zx whole square if zx is greater than 0. Now in order to go to the next step, see, now zx will come into exist. Now zx is divide, defined in two intervals. So for this definition, we will get two definitions. And for the second definition also, we are going to get two definition in that two intervals. Okay, so let us... After this, we will be getting... 1 minus zx, zx will come out of this, minus x, if zx, that is minus x is less than or equal to 0, and x is strictly less than 1 from here, and 1 minus zx is minus x, 1 minus one minus zx zx is 1 minus x so 1 minus 1 minus x when zx that is 1 minus x is less than or equal to 0 from here and x is this case greater than equal to 1. Now we will come with the second definition of f zx square zx is minus x square when zx that is minus x is greater than 0 and x is less than 1 the first case. In the second case, gx squared. gx is now 1 minus x. So 1 minus x whole square. When gx, that is 1 minus x, is greater than 0 and x is greater than or equal to 1. So we are in the final step. We get 1 plus x. If x is minus x is less than or equal to 0 means x is greater than or equal to 0 and strictly less than 1, this x belonging to greater than or equal to 0 less than 1. Then 1 minus 1 minus or minus x that is x. When x is greater than or equal to 1 and x is greater than or equal to 1, right? 1 minus x is less than or equal to 1 means x will go here, so x is greater than or equal to 1. So x belonging to greater than or equal to 1, 1 to infinity. From here we get x square. In the interval minus x greater than 0 means x is less than 0. 
and x is less than 1 the intersection is x is less than 0 so x belonging to minus infinity to 0 open and finally 1 minus x whole square here 1 minus x greater than 0 means x is greater than x is less than 1 and here it is saying x is greater than equal to 1 so there is no intersection so no solution here so final answer is this in black f of cx will be 1 plus x in the interval x belonging to 0 to 1 then x in the interval 1 to infinity and x square in the interval minus infinity to 0 so this will be the answer ok so if fx and gx are given like this f of z will be this ok so z of f is and leaving this one as an exercise for you to be done ok so with this let zx is 1 plus x minus zif of x and fx is signum of x signum function fx is the signum function then for all x f of z we have to find out this is an mcq the solution will go like this zx 1 plus what is x minus z i of greatest integer function of x it is fractional part of x right we know it x minus z i z i f of x is nothing but fractional part of x and let us write the signal function definition it is 1 for all x greater than 0 0 for all x equal to 0 and minus 1 for all x less than 0 ok so we have to find out f of z so we find out f of z x that is f of z x f undergo z undergo f so f in all the three interval these are the constant functions so it will become 1 if x x is z x here z x is greater than 0 0 if z x equal to 0 minus 1 if z x is less than 0 we put down the value uh, we will write the function z x here now next in the next step so 1 z x is this 1 plus fractional part of x greater than 0 0 if 1 plus fractional part of x equal to 0 and minus 1 if 1 plus fractional part of x is less than 0 now we have to analyze one thing we know fractional part of x always lie between 0 to 1 its range is 0 to 1 positive ok now we will see this 1 plus fractional part of x greater than 0 this is true for all x now fractional part of x is positive we are adding 1 to it so it will become always positive so it is true here fractional part of x itself is positive if we we'll consider the lowest value also it will become 0 so 0 plus 1 cannot be equal to 0 so this is wrong it doesn't matter what value of x we take ok similarly this one positive plus another positive quantity we are adding it cannot be negative so these two are wrong so we are living with only this so what we get finally f of z equal to a constant function 1 for all x again so the answer to this question is b so b is the correct answer the question is if fx equal to alpha x by x plus 1 for x is not equal to minus 1 then for what value or values of alpha is f of f of x is x so we have been given four options and we have been asked to find the value of alpha value or values of alpha so we will go for the solution and we will try to get f of fx f of fx fx undergo f so we will get 
alpha fx by fx plus 1. So alpha fx is alpha x by x plus 1. fx is alpha x by x plus 1 plus 1. So upon calculation we will be getting alpha square x by alpha x plus x plus 1 f of f of x and this one is exactly given to be equal to x f of f of x is given to be x so upon cross multiplying we will be getting this as alpha square x is equal to alpha x square plus x square plus x again so ultimately we will be getting x square alpha plus 1 minus ok plus let me give it in plus 1 minus alpha square x is equal to 0 ok so from here alpha plus 1 alpha plus 1 will be a common factor x square plus 1 minus alpha into x is equal to 0 now they are giving that f of f of x is equal to x for all x so this is true for all x only if this alpha plus 1 has to be equal to 0 so this implies alpha plus 1 has to be equal to 0 means alpha equal to minus 1 so this will be the answer so correct option is t okay okay it was Okay, let us go for the next question. Is this let fx equal to x square and zx equal to sin x for all x belonging to the set of real numbers? Then the set of values of all x satisfying f of z of z of f of x is equal to z of z of f of x is which one of these is an MCQ? So let us solve it. So basically they are giving me this 2, also they are supplying what is f and z. So let us calculate left hand side and right hand side, both the compositions separately. So we will find out this f of z of z of f of x. To get this we will start like this. The first function is f, then it will undergo z, then again it will undergo z and finally it will undergo f ok so fx is x square so we are finding out basically f of z of z of f of x will be equal to fx is x square it will undergo z z is sin x to sin of x square then again it will undergo z to so sin of sin of x square then finally it will undergo f that is x square so this whole thing is square ok so this is the left hand side we will go for right hand side right hand side is z of c of fx again it will we will start from here first fx then it will undergo z then it will undergo again z so we will be getting x square for fx z sine of x square then again z so sine of sine of x square so this is the right hand side part of the given expression so according to the question there is equal Therefore, sine of sine of x square whole thing square is equal to sine of sine of x square. So we have to solve it basically. So if I consider this one to be p suppose, 
we are considering this entire thing to be equal to p. So this one is nothing but p square equal to p. So p square equal to p means p into p minus 1 will be equal to 0. So you'll be getting two results, p equal to 0 or p equal to 1. So we are going to solve it now. Sine of x square is equal to 0 or sine of x square equal to 1. So this is what we have to solve now. Sorry, sine of sine of x square. Sine of sine of x square and sine of sine or sine of sine of x square equal to 1. We have to solve this now. Now, sine of something is equal to 0. We know that sine of x square will be equal to n pi. Okay, now sine of x square is n pi. We have to find out which are the values of n we are going to take. Now we know that range of sine is minus 1 to 1, right? So if I put here n equal to 0, okay, 0 is in, in that range. If I put n equal to 1, because this n pi here, n pi, n is belonging to z. This result is true for all the integers. So if I put 1 n equal to 1, I will get sine of something equal to pi. So sine, sine of something cannot be equal to pi because the range of sine function itself is from minus 1 to 1. So it is going beyond that interval because pi value is 3.14. Okay, so n cannot take the value of 1. Similarly, it cannot take the value of minus 1 also. The moment it will take minus 1, it will become minus pi. So it will go the other side. It will go out other side of the range. Minus 1, it will be, become lesser than minus 1. So it cannot take 1, it cannot take minus 1. Similarly, it cannot take 2, it cannot take minus 2 and so on. So only will this n can take is 0. So from there we will get sine of x square is 0 from here. So that means x square equal to n pi. That means x will be equal to plus minus of square root of n pi where n is belonging to <coughs> 0 this value n can take now in fact n was free for this n is free for all the integers because of this square root sign it will start from 0 0 1 and on the so this is the first case what about the second case we have to discuss this also the n sign of something is 1 so sign of x square has to be equal to this is sine pi by 2 so it will give me n pi plus minus 1 whole to the power n into pi by 2 and belongs to z now again we will see sine of something is equal to n pi plus minus 1 whole to the power n into pi by 2 n is belonging to z so let us take a few values of n and check what are the values x square can have okay <coughs> Sine of x square, sorry, sine of x square can have. Now if I put n equal to 0, sine of x square will become pi by 2. So what is the value of pi by 2? It is something 1.57, very close to 1.57. So again it is not belonging to that range. The range of sine function is minus 1 to 1. So it is not belonging to that, it is going beyond. The moment we are putting n equal to 0, it is sine of x square is pi by 2, which is not a value of sine. So n equal to 0 is not possible. <coughs> so let us put n equal to 1. What will get? Pi minus pi by 2. Pi minus 1 to the power 1 minus. So pi minus pi by 2. So pi minus pi by 2 is again pi by 2. That also not possible. That also not possible. Let us take minus 1. So minus pi, minus pi by 2, minus 3 pi by 2, that is also not possible. That is going beyond this side, lesser than minus 1. So what we can see here, observe here, sine of x square equal to pi by 2, 
this has no solution for x x has no solution here ok so only solution available to this equation is this x is equal to plus minus root over n pi and n is belonging to 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot that is nothing but set of numbers so option A is correct so answer to this question is A okay thank you